Do you know the difference between self-belief and self-doubt? What if I told you they were the same side of a two-headed coin? Hey, Jason here, and if you've been watching the channel, you've been seeing me go through Johannesburg, showing you how beautiful it is. I've been taking a break for a couple of for a couple of days, actually relaxing until next month, because I was gonna already have a busy schedule. I'm gonna go to something called the Rand Show out here. Uh, I heard it's some big event that happens every year, so I'm gonna go there. And most importantly, I've been talking to you about success, what it is and how to get it in the three areas of life that I focus on, happiness, health, and wealth. And so today, I really want to talk about self-belief and self-doubt. Now, this comes from my reading from today, uh, and I'm still reading the book, Unreasonable Success and How to Achieve It by Richard Koch. And he is the guy who wrote the 80-20 principle. If you have not read that book, I strongly recommend it. This breaks, that, that book, The 80-20 Principle, breaks down society. It breaks it down to a T. This is how not only governments, politicians, but just people in general, this is how they take advantage of people because they know this 80-20 rule. And now in the modern era, when I say modern era, I mean like probably the last 30 years, 30, 40 years with uh, modern uh, thought, psych thought psychology, we're now starting to understand how to use this 80-20 principle to actually get success in our lives. And so it's a very important book and I highly recommend it. And so I wanna talk about self-belief and self-doubt. And so, you know, I, most of us believe we know what these words mean when we're using them. However, I've come to the conclusion, I don't know English. I speak English, however, I don't know English because I do not know the root of these words. I don't know where they come from. All I know is these words were told, told to me by some teacher who was not successful, uh, a lot of coaches who were alcoholics when I was growing up. And I thought I knew what this stuff meant. But the truth is now that I'm willing to understand my ignorance in different areas of my life, it's really been helping me because now I'm understanding what these words really mean and how to use these words for my advantage. Um, if you're somebody who believes in law of attraction, uh, universe, energy, things like that, our words are incantations. It's our words that attract the things to us. They put us in a certain vibration. And if we don't know how to use those words correctly, we're always in an ambivalent vibration because our emotions and words are not actually adding up. And this is why most people believe they're optimistic, but they're really pessimistic and just pissed off. Uh, so many times, a lot of people, when you ask them, like, hey, how you doing today? Eh, it's been better. Like, that's a negative vibration. Like, you should feel great. You should feel good. Like, what are you grateful for? And so let's go ahead and start breaking down self-belief. And so let me just show you this little image. How it shows you he's just a regular guy, but he sees him in himself as a superhero. And it's very interesting because as I've been studying uh, rich people, wealthy people, and just successful people all around, most of them start from very meager beginnings, meaning they don't have much, yo. They did not come from big educations, nothing like that. Even um, Thomas Edison, the, you know, he's celebrated as one of the best inventors in the world for creating a light bulb and other things. However, when he was in grade school, his uh, teacher wrote home to him, wrote home to his mom with a letter that, hey, your kid is mentally, um, has mental issues, to say it in a proper way. A politically correct way your kid has mental issues and will never succeed in anything in life and she was like the best thing you can do for him is just take him out of school and it turned out later on in his life he because he had so much money and that teacher was poor he actually paid her bills until she passed away like the things we don't actually learn when people are telling us oh idolize these people idolize these people we need to start understanding these people and stop idolizing them because they're not special or more special than us, they're doing things in a certain way. And so here under self-belief it says, define self as special and important. And think about this, do you consider yourself special? Do you consider yourself important in life? I can tell you for me, I didn't feel that way many years ago. Hell, I'll even be honest, like, I didn't feel special or important until, I would say until I lost, um, until I released all of that excess weight. When I started regaining my health, when I reversed my heart issues, when I was able to regrow the nerves in my leg and walk completely without using any assistive devices, when I started helping my depression, anxiety, 
and when I started getting my mobility back from my spinal surgery. When I started doing those, I was like, yo, I'm special. Like, there's something here. Like, I need to figure out how was I able to do this. And that was that first key for me, that first light bulb moment. Where I was like, okay, there is something special about me. I'm not just some run-of-the-mill black dude who got to just settle for whatever's going on in the world. And importance, as impo I would say important, is one that I still struggle with internally. Um, like, if you've seen me in person or met me in person, I'm very reserved. As far as I don't like to boast too much about myself, I don't. I downplay a lot of the things that I've do and done in my life. And I'll be honest with you, like going back, if I went through every part of my life, I probably lived enough for eight or nine different lifetimes. And so, like I know internally, I know that I'm important. However, to verbalize it and really, really. Um, uh, hone in or internalize that is something that I'm still working on. And so you're going to see that as I'm going through the, as you're following me through my video marketing journey, and I'm showing you like the things that I'm doing and uh, opening back some of the curtains and letting you see who Jason is. Second bullet is under self belief. It says sense of density, sense of destiny. I'm sorry, sense of destiny and belief in star. Now, the belief in star part, I don't understand that yet, what it means, so I'm going to keep reading more and I'll be breaking that down. But sense of destiny. Sense of destiny is a purpose. And this is something that I'm really honing in in for me personally. I know my destiny is to change the continent of Africa. I know it was meant for CC to pass away last year to change my whole traje trajectory of going to Vietnam and Southeast Asia. To I needed to be here on this continent. I needed to be here to start teaching some of this mindset stuff and start changing the future generations here. And I know that. Like, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. When you know your purpose, you know your purpose. And I know my purpose is to be on this continent. So this is one of the reasons why I'm not leaving Africa. And I say Africa is the continent. I'm not leaving this continent no time soon. And then the third thing, uh, the third bullet under self-belief, it says can only flourish if tied to a specific goal. And so for me, my specific goal is my purpose, which is uh, the destiny of teaching mindset here, showing people how do you really start using your mind? How do you start attracting the things that you want in this world? How do you ignore everything that's out here telling you that you can't succeed? And how do you actually internalize who you are and force the universe to give you what you want? And then under self-doubt, it says it complements. It's not an opposite of self-belief. Now, that really shocked me because I always thought self-doubt was a negative thing. As in, if, I don't, if I'm full of self-doubt right now, that means I don't have self-belief. And then it says may come from sense of abandonment, isolation, or neglect. And this is true for all of us. Like, I can say for me... I know I had a lot of self-doubt as in being a black man in this world, black man in this world, because I didn't grow up without a, with a father. You know, having that abandonment and that um, feeling left behind, not important, all of those things. Uh, you know, when it's your biological parent, like, and they just refuse to acknowledge you, accept you, anything, it does create a self-doubt in there. And so, like, I know for me that I that happened. But on the flip side, looking back at it, and I understand how it complements self-belief because it gave me the belief on what I wanted to be as a black man. It gave me like, okay, I don't need to be like this motherfucker. Like, I ain't going to be like him and just be completely a, a bastard or a horrible person. Like, I knew what type of man I wanted to be. So, like, I understand that a lot better now where I am in life. And then the third uh, bullet point says, useful to prompt drive for personal control. Now this I understand 100%. I am a control freak for my life. I do not let people take me off my um, trajectory. I don't let people influence my decisions. I am 100% in control of my life. Like I take suggestions from people. I uh, probably think about it for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months and then see, okay, is it making sense with the path that I'm on? And if it's not, I say no. This is one of the things where 
people don't understand how I'm so rigid or I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't teether the, teether, uh, teether the fence when it comes to drinking and stuff like that or going to nightclubs, hanging out at night. It's because it's not for me. Like I am in control of, in control of my life and doing those things in the past, it showed me exactly where that leads to for the future. So for me, I am 100% in control of what I do, my actions and the things that I do to entertain myself. And now let's go to the actual reading of the book. And I wanna just read this paragraph. Self-doubt and self-belief comprise a rhythm of yin and yang, a dialectic where, where self-doubt crystallizes, reinforces, refines, or completely changes the doubter's mission and paradoxically leads to a high confidence that it can be achieved. Self-doubt is only damaging if it is repressed or permanently swamps the mind. And this is so true, like, you, we see this time and time again through so many people. And some of the best ways you can see this is when people are going through recovery of any type of addiction. It doesn't matter if it's a sex addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, uh, a gambling addiction. You see their whole mindset is only on even food addiction, yo, their whole mindset is only focused on this is who I am. Oh, I have this problem. I have this problem. This is one of the things where I disagree with, um, like, uh, AA, what are always telling the people, remember how many exactly days, how many, what was the exact time you uh, stopped drinking? And, you know, usually these people can tell you to the exact moment how long they've been clean. However, we're not looking at the flip side of that of you're focusing so much on not doing that activity that you don't want to do anymore. So it does swamp your mind. And this is why a lot of people actually, this is why we have a lot of yo-yo issues within society today, because we're taught to focus so much on staying clean, doing this, or how many people have been taught, oh, just focus on getting out of debt, focus on getting out of debt, focus on learning how to make money, swamp your mind with the things that you want not the things that you don't want to do anymore. And this is very crucial. Like this is such a mindset hack that if you start doing this, you will see your life change immediately around you. You'll see toxic people start leaving away from you. You'll see yourself being out of toxic situations. You even see yourself being less toxic. Like it sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, this is the truth. If you start focusing your mind and swamp your mind with the things that you want, you're gonna start building your self-belief and then your self-doubt is gonna actually complement it. So let me give you a prime example with me and my, um, when it comes to around eating, weight loss and all of those things, weight release, I'm sorry. And the reason why I use weight release, just to let you know, because I'm real cautious on the words that I use. When we have been, all been programmed from birth, if we lose something, that is a negative thing. So this is one of the reasons why most people, when they go on a weight loss journey, usually within six months to a year, they gain not only all of that weight back, but more. Because you want to find what you've been looking for. And if you've been losing weight, you're gonna automatically wanna find that weight. And so to make sure you don't lose too much again, you usually gain more. This is the whole psychology mindset of weight loss. And this is why I would say if you want to become healthier or become slimmer, start focusing and using the words weight release. When we release things, we're letting it go for good, meaning we're not looking for it anymore. And so when I started my weight release journey, you know, looking at myself physically, it was self-harming because I wasn't happy with myself. I was disgusted with what I saw in the mirror. And, you know, but I used it to reinforce. And this is where, when it says it complements, looking at the way I was, looking at my health and the things that I couldn't do, it complemented because I started saying, okay, I want to be able to breathe without using a CPAP machine. I want my body to be able to do what it's supposedly normally do, regulate its blood pressure. I want to be able to walk. And because I focused on the things that I wanted, it slowly started coming to me and then my world just started collapsing and bringing it all to me. And by the time I really realized how great I was doing, 
I was like, holy shit. Like, man, this is possible. These All these years I was sitting here crying, miserable. I was depressed. I didn't feel like there was any hope. And then after all of a sudden, all of those things that I didn't like about myself, they started reassuring me to make sure that I never go down that path again. And so what I mean by it started reassuring me, started looking at, like I always keep old pictures of me in the phone where I was really fat. Uh, one, I like to show it to people because most people don't believe it was me. But I like to show it to myself because it reminds me of who that Jason was. That guy was sick. He was miserable. He was unhappy. He was actually unhappy wasn't even the right word. He was hateful. He was full of hate and resentment towards people in this world. And I never strive to be that person again. And so that's how my self-doubt actually became a complimentary to my self-belief. Because now when I see who I used to be, it motivates me to like, okay, hey, clean up your eating. Like right now I've been, I think I've, it's been 60 hours without any solid food. I've just been doing liquid. Like I have my tea here with some aloe juice in it uh, that helps uh, help uh, release uh, excess weight faster. And the reason why I'm able to do these things so easier now, what most of you may not see is because I remember who that guy was, who that Jason was when he was just swamping his mind with self-doubt. So when I start seeing too much self-doubt come in or I start seeing my behaviors get to a point where I don't like it, I can easily switch to my self-belief and then I start rebuilding my image, building it back up and I swamp my mind with a lot of healthier ideas. And so I hope that really got you some value. I'm gonna be breaking this book down a lot more to you and if you're looking for it, it is Unreasonable Success and How to Achieve It by Richard Cox or coach, however you say it. Um, so I hope you got some value from that. Hit the like button if you like this type of content. I know you do. Also, share this content with other people. These We now live in a world. The world is so small now and we don't realize it. We all need each other. We all need to share information with each other. We all need to share content with each other. We all need, we all need each other because we don't know who's suffering in silence. So many of us think the world is still so big that only us, is, like I'm the only person suffering from depression. I'm the only person that's suffering with not being able to release weight. Oh, I'm the only suffer, person suffering with not being able to be healthy. I'm the only person suffering with having money issues. And the truth is, all of us are suffering from these same issues and we need to now vocalize it more than ever. And so please share this content with anybody that you know. And most uh, next thing to do is subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when there's more content coming this way. Follow me at, throughout all uh, social medias. You can go to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Yes, Jason is on TikTok. And just put in Jason Chaney and you will see my picture there. So have a great day and I will see you tomorrow on Friday.